Yes, we finally get to meet. Welcome to Creativity with Shay C. Uh, I got some new stuff going on today that I wanted to share with you. Um, plants are doing awesome. Uh, got our lights in, so I wanted to show you that. Uh, is also we are going to be filling up the reservoir today because it's gotten really, really low. The last time I filled it was two weeks ago. So I'm going to be showing uh, us filling up the tank. I'm also going to be doing the nutrients and checking the pH and all. So I want to share that with you. Anyways, let's get to it. See you in a bit. Okay, y'all. Uh, first thing I wanted to show you is show you how well the plants are doing. They are doing awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. The only thing I've been having, struggling with is the lettuces. And I think that's basically, the my tomatoes, look at that. Check, 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 check. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, the, uh, the lettuce is, I've got some that does real, is doing really well in it. So I'm thinking that it has to do with the lack of light that I have had. That uh, you can see down here, over in these two pockets here. You know, they got really lanky and you can see right there also. You know, which I think that one is basically because my, my green bean plant right here is just overtaking everything. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, I think it's, you know, a lot of the lack of, uh, light has kind of caused them to, um, just get a little leggy, you know, so I'm hoping we decided to go ahead. We got two more lights, but I ended up moving my one light over to here. And the reason being is because that squash plant has gotten so big, it started coming up through the uh, shelving that was above it. So we actually had to take the top shelf off and move it to um, that shelf there and then take that light off of the, si the tower system and move it over here because it's adjustable on the stand. We, we made that stand um, out of the, it's actually a, a, uh, photography light stand on each side is what it is. I used it basically because it is adjustable. Um, anyways, that's another video, but anyways, we moved the light over to here. So this would get more even light, um, because my squash was not producing. Uh, when it did produce, it was kind of, um, they just got maybe a couple of inches long and they fell off. They just, they wouldn't grow. And I'm thinking it had to do with the light that I had on there just was not enough to make them produce like they're supposed to. So I'm hoping that's the key. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, back to the tower. We've got our parsley absolutely doing awesome. As I showed you over here tomatoes doing awesome some of our lettuce doing awesome this is potatoes doing awesome uh, that's regular onion up at the top up here I haven't checked it but couldn't tell you one way or the other I haven't done anything with it uh, green beans um, they are doing awesome, you can see. Got them floating around back in here. They're doing really, really well. I got more green beans here. Doing awesome also. And more green beans here. As you can see, doing really well. Uh, anyways, it's a little tight getting back in here because we moved some of, some of the lights. All tomatoes doing awesome so and then more lettuce back over and or not lettuce excuse me uh swiss chard doing awesome the lettuce is what i was telling you is really has been struggling it's it's just getting it's really 
has gotten leggy so I'm pretty sure even seeing how these tomato plants are here are not really strong compared to some of the other you know like I had this light was closer so they've gotten really much you can see the difference in and how much bigger their their stems are growing in comparison to this here so I'm really thinking it's a light issue um, which we're fixing little by little we did get two more lights in however we took like I said we took the one light off uh, to put over onto the squash uh, plant over there and um, so we're going to be getting three more lights we decided to go ahead and put a total of eight lights and the reason for that is to make basically we've got four of these poles okay that goes all the way around and you can see each pole has got two of these okay which swing in and out so we're going to make it where each one of these poles has got a light hanging from it that way it will be evenly distributed upon the, the tower and it'll be an equal amount going all the way around with which should cause the problem as far as getting some areas lack of light it should end up fixing that problem so anyways we're going to end up stopping here and moving on over to changing the reservoir out so give me a second be right back we'll get okay guys what we're going to end up doing i hope this camera's close enough for you i move this back i check and make sure that you can see well enough hopefully this is going to take a long while so i'm not going to bore you guys with the, uh, a lot of it but i don't know if you see this basically we are probably i'm going to say we need to fill this whole reservoir almost about a foot okay so that's going to basically bring it up to right about right about this level right here is where we're going to be going where the tip of that hose is at so stay with us and once i get that loaded up i'll be right back as you can see guys it's going to take a while to fill this up so haven't forgot you anyways i'm just going to let this sit for a little bit fill this tank up once we get it filled up then we're going to go on to i'm going to show you what i do as far as testing the uh we're going to add nutrients okay and get our ph levels right and i want to show you that as well so hang in there be right back all right guys we got her filled back up uh as you can see reference to my finger this is basically tip of my finger is now touching right there so probably about the length of my finger basically is how far we are from the top of the reservoir the reason we don't go up any higher than that is because our drain tube this black section that you see right here okay that right there is what basically is what they uh, the garden stock company uh, sells this it's a mover it comes with uh, wheels so you can move the tower from place to place well we didn't purchase it for that purpose we purchased it so we could use this because there's a drain tube that you can attach to this so the bottom piece of this can catch some of that water go into a drain tube and go into something else drain somewhere else or into something else and that's the reason that we purchased this so we could hook that drain tube up and drain into a reservoir. So the issue is, is it sits so low to the top of this tower and that drain tube comes right off the side, okay, of this. So it kind of lays flat. And that's why you see these little discs. We had to raise up one side just a touch, just so we could get enough to make it drain uh, with no issues and to make sure it wasn't going to leak anywhere um, so that was the purpose of that so that's why we do not fill it excuse me any more than we 
then I have it filled right here and that's to make sure that it drains properly. All right, so right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna check, check uh, our nutrient level and this is what we use. Okay, I don't know if I can get that to focus or not. Focus, focus, focus. Yeah. Anyways, this is what we use for checking our nutrients, okay? Um, it gives you your parts per million, basically, on here. It's not going to tell you, oh, you're out of this certain nutrient. It doesn't work like that. It's going to give you your parts per million, and you basically buy your your plants, uh, like, for instance, tomatoes usually, I believe, need a little bit more nutrient than, say, uh, lettuce needs, okay? So I try to find that happy medium, which I have found to be slightly over 500 ppm. Um, I was way too high before, so I started dropping, and you gotta play with it. You gotta find what your plants are happy with, you know? Um, especially for the system that you might have them in. My system over uh, that the squash is in, that's a cracky system. Um, I have my PPMs a little bit different on that one than I do on the tower, okay? Because that one gets fed pretty much any time it wants it. <laughs> uh, this one gets fed when we feed it. Um, anyways, uh, so we're going to check our PPMs and then uh, we're going to start adding our nutrients and I'll show you everything that how we do go about doing it. So anyways, you got a on off switch on here. Okay, we'll turn this on. When you first have it on, you're going to see it just registers zero. Okay. So now you do not, when you put this into the water, you do not want to go above where your your line is here, okay, right in here, okay, and the reason for it is you're going to end up having water go in, and I think these basically have like little computer chipboards in them, and water will intrude into it, and it'll ruin it, so you're just barely going to stick this down into the water. I'm going to press my hold button. Okay, as you see, they're really, really low. That number, the 150, I want that to be at around, around 550 is where I'm wanting it at. So, our next step basically is to mix our nutrients up, okay, which we use Master Blend. And Master Blend consists of three different three different dry ingredients it's not a liquid nutrient it's a dry ingredient that basically you have Epsom salt uh, you have your master blend and then you have cal calcium nitrate so I'm going to turn the camera around um, so we're gonna say give me a second right now so I can get the camera turned around and I'm gonna show you how we mix this up real quick Right, guys, back with you. What we have here, we got calcium nitrate. Okay, we've got our master blend right here, and then we have our Epsom salt. Okay, now basically your mix on this, uh, it's of course it's going to matter, you know, how many gallons you're mixing this into and all. But it's pretty much, say, like for me, I'm doing pretty much a one teaspoon, okay, one whole teaspoon of calcium nitrate. And this is how I'm starting now. It doesn't mean that's how I'm ending. I'm doing one mix of calcium nitrate, one teaspoon. Then I'm going to do one teaspoon of Master Blend. And then the Epsom salt is always going to basically be half of what your calcium nitrate in your Master Blend is. So seeing I'm going one teaspoon, then I'm going to go a half a teaspoon for my uh, calcium nitrate. I mix it 
into this water basically this came from the uh, reservoir I dip some out of the reservoir I'm gonna put my calcium nitrate in here let it dissolve a little bit and then I'm gonna pour that into the reservoir then I'm gonna do the pick up same thing pick up some more water I'm gonna put my master blend in put it into the cup here let it dissolve a little bit pour it into the reservoir and so on after I get done with that I'm gonna go back with my meter again and I'm going to check and see what my numbers are I don't want to overdo this because if I overdo it I can end up going too high and the only way to fix that is basically empty out your reservoir some add water to it again and you're kind of starting from scratch because you have to get those numbers back down so I only want to do a little bit at a time to get it where I need to after a while of doing this so long I'm going to end up knowing exactly what knows needs to go into this reservoir um, you know you'll know over time of doing it for so much but I've only been doing this if you watch back on our previous videos um, I've only been doing this for X amount of time so it's not like I'm on this tower is what I'm talking about so I'm trying to figure out exactly what I need to put in for the tower so let's get started we're going to start with the master blend teaspoon in here. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. You want you can get this uh, master blend off of uh, eBay or off, off of Amazon and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, I'm not going to tell you that it's my favorite only because it being a dry free mix I don't really I'm, I'm thinking about going to the uh, I think it's called maxi growth uh, which is a liquid nutrient I did use the Dyna Dyna grow I did use this at one time and I did like it but it's a little bit on the pricey side um, I was thinking about going to the maxi grow and trying it to see if it works and if it's you know a more simple step you're you're usually going to pay more for your liquid nutrients because they are uh, easier um, I believe I paid for the master blend and I got this is probably maybe only, I want to say this much, it was probably filled to about here on this bag. Um, so there's a, there's a bit that's gone out of it, but this is going to last you forever. Um, I got two big bags, okay, of, of this that fills these up. So I've got more that's still sitting back in a pack that hasn't even been opened yet. And I want to say it was around 50 something dollars, I think, is what I spent on it. 58. Oh, and that's going to last a long, 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 long time. But like I said, I, I kind of think that it's a little bit of a pain to use. It does work well. Um, the plants definitely like it. So it's just, unless you get your time down, well, you know, or not your time, excuse me. Um, exactly what you know once I get used to it and it makes it easier to mix it and all this kind of stuff then it probably won't be as much a pain to me but right now it's kind of a little bit of a pain that's how I feel about it anyways let me get the rest of this mixed up and I'm going to pour it in there and we're going to check our numbers okay all we got that now we're going to move on to the calcium nitrate again I'm putting one teaspoon into my container with it Usually with the calcium nitrate, I go ahead and I mix in into the same container. I'll go ahead and mix in my Epsom salt, okay, um, into that same container. So now I'm going to take my 
half a teaspoon with the Epsom salt. And again, it's just a half a teaspoon. You want to make sure that you seal these bags back up really good. Um, because they will end up hardening over, over time if you don't. If moisture gets to it. Uh, anyways, um, you can see with this, this takes a little bit more time to uh, get this to, to dissolve really good and as far as your um your meters go i purchased this okay this meter i purchased along with a uh, ph meter that looked very similar to this except it was yellow and i paid like 15 dollars for the two of them well i got literally got two uses out of that ph meter and it bit the dust and would not work anymore. And I did not ever uh, go above the line or anything like that. I was very careful with it. But those little cheap meters, I'm just telling you, in my opinion, I would not waste your time on it. Um, this, as far as the uh, PPM meter here, uh, the one I'm using right here, it's, it's lasted me a good long while as far as this one goes. But the pH meter, I got two uses out of it, and that was it. So I would not waste your money on that. Um, on my uh, pH meter, I ended up... Where's my pH meter at? Oh, here it is. I ended up purchasing another one, and it cost... I want to say it was around $50, and I believe I got it off of Amazon. It's called Apera okay, Instruments. Anyways, it's a very, very good one. I'm extremely pleased with it. And it comes with your solutions for basically calculating your meter and all. Um, but it's instant, instant read. It's, it's not failed me once. It's really, I'm really happy with it. So is it worth spending a little extra for that I, I believe it is especially if you're going to do the long haul on this and that if you're growing inside you're pretty much growing year round so you're going to be using your meter a lot <laughs> you know I mean it's not a seasonal thing when you're inside like this it's you're pretty much growing year round so uh, yeah I, I think it's worth spending the extra on that that's my opinion um, it doesn't mean that I'm right it's just an opinion, you know, you guys do as you guys feel is what's right for you, you know. Um, I just know that that did not, it didn't work well for me. So it was a waste of money as far as I was concerned. But again, it's, it's $15, so you're looking at $7.50 a piece, I guess. You know, I guess you get what you pay for. It was, we all have that. enthusiasm of thinking that oh maybe this will work out and it'll last me a long time and I only spent this much money for it it usually does not work out that way okay this isn't completely dissolved I am going to go ahead and put it in there um, so I will come back to with you in just a second guys let me get this in there and then we're going to do okay guys we're back at uh, over at the reservoir we're going to go ahead and turn on our meter it zeroes out again. I'm going to see. I don't know if you're going to be able to catch it when I stick it in here. If you can see how far I'm going down. I'm only going down only to that top little line. Up here there is a hold button. I'm going to switch around just a little bit. There is a hold button. Let's see what we're at. Oh, we came up some, but we're not where we need to be. So again, I'm going to throw another 
another teaspoon in there. I'm not going to show you me sticking it on the teaspoon. I'm going to keep the camera where it's at. I'm going to throw another teaspoon in there of each and then a, another half a teaspoon of the other and we should be where we're supposed to be at. So let's get that. And this time I'm going straight to the tank. I'm not even going to bother putting it into the tank. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to mix it in the cup. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So we're going to stick another master blend teaspoon. Sit this back up to make sure it's sealed good. Knowing that that only came up, what were we were at, 150, so that came up 100 to 260. So, mm, I probably should be putting two teaspoons in there, but all honesty, I'm not going to do that. And the main reason is, like I said, I don't want to go over. If I go over, I'm starting from scratch pretty much. I'm having to empty out this tank, and believe me, that's kind of a pain in the butt to have to go through all that. It does have to be done about once a month to clean out your tank, okay? Uh, so you can clean it out and all, but that's much more involved in doing that, which I'll do a video on that at the time that we do clean our tank out, so you guys can kind of see how we go about doing that. Um, Right now, I don't want to be doing that. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, now that I got that in there, I'm going to mix this around some. My hubby, he cut me a pretty good size hole for a door here which is awesome because I can get in here and still stir this so I can see if there's problems going on. You know, if one of the um, the aerators isn't working like it's supposed to do, or say the, uh, which as a matter of fact, I'm not really, hmm. I'm not seeing the aerator doing what it's supposed to. I know it is because I'm feel it here. We're getting ready to find out after we get done. I'm going to dip me out some more water. Now we're going to put the calcium nitrate and the Epsom salt in here. So again, you're going a teaspoon with the calcium nitrate. And then I'm going to go in a half a teaspoon with the Epsom salt. And I know you guys are probably sitting back saying, well, my God, why didn't she get, you know, put, put more than that in, knowing that this isn't going to bump me, bump me up where I need, you know, need to be in the first place. And the reason is, like I said, I don't want to be just jumping the gun. And now I've gone over what I need the numbers to be at. And then I have to empty this tank out. I would rather do it a little at a time. Here's my half a teaspoon of my Epsom salt. I'd rather do a little at a time knowing I'm going to end up getting my numbers where they need to be at. Okay. So, let's stir this up a little bit. Get that a little bit dissolved. Um, anyways guys we've done a lot of cleanup since Hurricane Sally we got more damage than we were we thought we had actually got at the beginning but it's worked out um, we had our camper stored several miles from here we can't get our camper into our yard our yard is just the gate is too tight uh, we have a fifth wheel anyways um 
where we have our camper store, we drove over there and that was a disaster area and we were so, so, uh, oh my gosh, we'll be lucky because unfortunately so many people lost their campers, trees were everywhere and we were one of the few that our camper survived, um, did not have any branches land on it, how that happened is beyond me. Um, I'm happy it worked out that way for us, but I'm really sad for the folks that, you know, lost so much. Um, I do, however, see in the aftermath of the amount of trees that went down in that storm. Oof, wow. It, amazing the amount of trees that went down. It's just completely snapped in two and completely uprooted on these, you know, 100-year-old trees. Uh, and a lot of people were so fortunate that they didn't get more damage than what they did get because some of these trees, it was almost like, you know, I don't know if you're religious or not. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. Okay, I do believe in God, my God. Um, anyways, uh, there's a uh, some somebody something was looking down upon a lot of people in this storm because those trees literally I watched, looked at a lot of homes that those trees fell around the homes and never landed on anything and I'm talking abundance an abundance of amount of folks that that happened to there were unfortunate a lot more unfortunate ones. Then I there were a lot of lucky ones in this one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get our meter again and we're gonna test and see what we got. Turn this back on. We've zeroed out. You see that? We zeroed out. So now we're gonna dip it back down in here. We're at 380, if you can see that or not. 380 is where we're at, okay? So I'm gonna say probably at least maybe one and a half more times, maybe one more time. Let's see, that's another 100, so 480. We're gonna be very close at the other. I'm gonna go a heaping teaspoon on this one. The heaping teaspoon, I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring this where it needs to be. I want to go a little bit above where I want to be at because once, when you add this, uh, your pH level has a tendency to go down. Okay, so I haven't tested my pH yet, but I don't want it to be any higher than then it needs to be. Dip this out some more water. I'm sorry for the video being a little extra long this time, guys. But I'm going a heaping teaspoon on this one. So this is not double the amount, but it's definitely a lot more than I have. So it's a heaping teaspoon master blend. up a little bit here. A lot of people like to completely dissolve their dry nutrients before they, you know, throw them in. And some people actually just throw them in straight. I have done that and it's not harmed anything. Um, but I also have access to a pretty good open door here that I can access my reservoir to be able to get that stir stick down in there and um, really stir it up really well. A lot of these tower systems, the doors a lot of times will be really small. Um, so you don't really have room to uh, 
get a stick down in there and blend it up real well and make sure that everything's dissolved real well. That zipper thing here is not wanting to fit. Oh. Okay. Extra heaping teaspoon again on the calcium nitrate. Okay, this isn't really keeping it because these are these are kind of like little big pellets. So I'm gonna kind of add a little bit extra to it. Because you can't really get a keeping on that one. Because they're little pellets and they fall off the spoon to begin with. Then we're going to add our Epsom salt, a heaping teaspoon of it, which probably does do it the same way. And guys, if uh, you got any questions, go ahead and comment. And we'll, uh, comment below. You know, if I can answer it for it for you, I definitely, definitely will. If I can't. Maybe some one of our other viewers might have an answer for you at least. Um, by no means do I, know, do I know everything there is to know about this. I don't. Okay. However, I've learned quite a bit as I've gone along here, and I'm learning still. I do I do everything by the book? I don't. Um, that's the nice thing about gardening is you find what works for you and that's what, uh, if it's succeeding, continue doing it. And something I'm doing is succeeding, so <laughs> I think my plants are kind of showing it, so I'm going to stick with what I'm doing. If, uh, again, if you've got questions, go ahead and ask. I'd be happy to give you guys any information I might know. Um, also, we are a growing channel. If you can like and share and give us a thumbs up, I'd love to see you subscribe uh, and join our community. Um, not that we have a big community as of yet. I would love to see us get one so we can all maybe share our I'm gonna mix a little bit more um, our knowledge together. And that's to me that's I mean, YouTube is a great you know, platform. I mean what an awesome platform to I've learned so so much off of YouTube. I mean I wish you know, I'm, I'm close to 60 years old. I wish uh, there was something like this back in my day because our day was, you know, it was trial and error with a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of times you, you would lose a lot of money trying, believe me. It took a lot of tries to finally get it right, or you might not have got it right at all. I mean, that's just the way it was. I'm sure a lot of you folks know where I'm coming from on that. I'm not the only, the only one out there that was out there back then. So I absolutely think YouTube is a wonderful platform for people to learn and share. And especially if it's working for you and to share that with other folks, to me that's just you're giving something back, you know, that I mean, this isn't, uh, this is great for me, you know, uh, we, we're getting some plants off it, and I absolutely love doing it, but to share this with you guys, and maybe somebody can get something off of it, to know I left my little piece out there, that means something to me, you know, so anyways, we're going to do a test again, see what our numbers are at, hopefully, I doubt very much it's going to be exactly where it needs to be. Your power button is right here at the bottom, okay, and then your your hold button, get that to focus, 
your hold button is up at the top and that's what I'm pressing once I get this down in there because this way I can I keep hitting those lights try this also gives you a temperature reading at the bottom I don't really pay attention to that because we are indoors the water pretty much stays at the temp that pretty close to you know what we our temperature of our home so it's 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 where it needs to be anyways um so we're gonna go back in give her a test again and hopefully it's where we need it to be this time just by doing that little extra heaping Let's see where we're at we are at look at there 545 that's awesome where we need to be that's that's pretty much that's where I like it so anywhere's from around there to 550 um, because it's you know as I change the pH uh, in this and as it sits after a while it's it's probably going to change just a little bit so this is where my, I like my ppm's to be at this is what's been working for me uh, anyways um, we're going to move on to our pH reader and I'll show you how that works um, you do after you get done with these you do want to rinse them off really well okay you don't want to leave that because it kind of gets caked up on these little sensors down here um, with this one try to dry off the water on it and leave it as dry as possible with your pH one you want to leave just a little bit of water in the cover of the container um, of the unit because you want to keep these sensors moist so you can see I've got you can see just a little bit of fluid down at the bottom of this here with the cover of the sensor so I'm going to take that off chubber get oh I'm sorry you guys want to meet chubbers let's see you want to say hello chubber chubber where are you at I can't see you I can't see you through the line come over here Come over here. Can't tell where you're at. I can't get him over there, guys. Let's see if we can turn the camera so you guys can meet Chubbers. There he is. There's Mr. Chubber. There's Mr. Chubber. There he is. <laughs> He's camera shy, guys. <laughs> Not really. But... Okay, let's see if we can get back to what we were doing. All right. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and test our pH, and I know that this is going to be off. I like to have the pH usually right around the 6 mark. That's where it seems to be in its happy place. Um, like I said before, your, your plants, okay, a tomato plant might be happier with your pH number being here, and then your lettuce might be happier with your pH number being here. You want to try to stay between 5.8, uh, I think they say 5.8 to 6.5. I try to keep it in around the 6 mark because that's what's been working and every all of them, not just my tomatoes, all of them seem relatively happy at that spot. So, oh yeah, we are, let's see. We are at five point. Oh, this is going to be a pain. Five point five. So five point five. Um, which I hate when it's that close. <laughs> because when it's that close it's a little bit hard to get it where you know because it's so so close here's what i use guys all right this is ouch oh my god bloom city's ph up okay I think these were 
a big gallon of it. Now I will tell you the gallons are, if you have something to pour this into, it probably would be better. The gallons kind of are a pain to work with. And I also use this here, hooked, uh, it's a hose hooked onto a big syringe. It makes it a lot easier to get it in and out of this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up a little bit. So it doesn't take a whole lot. It's an us being this close with this. Hopefully that's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I also want to tell you that your pH, which one is it? I want to say it's the pH. I don't know. I keep thinking it's pH down, but I'm good. I could be wrong. One of these basically had leaked on our concrete floor right here and it stained it okay so the acidity basically ate that concrete uh, didn't eat the concrete we ate the, the paint that was used to um, to paint the concrete it ate the paint off so you want to keep an eye on that for sure this does not zero back after you're done with it Okay, it's just going to take off from where it was before, which it's not. It's actually taken off a little bit higher because it went with what the water was in here. So, we are now at 6.1, which is close enough because I have not stirred this since I put this in here. So, I'm going to stir this up and we're going to check it again. And that's just to make sure that I could be dipping into it. Right there where we dump the stuff at. You know? So we're going to stir this up really good. I am not hearing my air readers and I'm not seeing bubbles in them. So I don't think the air readers are working. I could be wrong. It doesn't look like it to me. Alright, let's check it again. This system, by the way, well, that didn't change, did it? Okay, now we're at six. Nope, there it goes. Six point one. I'm gonna go with that, guys. That is close enough. Okay, um, it is really hard to get your number pinpointed. When you're that, that close, I would be going up, down, up, down, up, down. I mean, if it's that close, I need it. That's my choosing, that how I do it. Um, you might want to have it right dead on the nose. That's up to you. Anyways, um, so that's it, guys. That pretty much uh, is how we change our nutrients and fill our tank back up when the water starts getting low. Um, I usually at the, oh, not the first, but at the, towards the end of every month, um, I'm going to say it's the end. Once a month, we basically empty this tank out and then we refill it. We clean the tank, okay, and then we refill it and start our nutrients from scratch all over again. Uh, the reason for that is because you can get nutrient buildup. Okay, uh, you also, I don't know if you could see the white stuff that was laying at the bottom of the reservoir. Um, at the very bottom down here, you're not going to see it now because I stirred this. But at the very bottom, this perlite, okay, this white perlite that we use to, as a medium for planting, has a lot of times we'll have some dust stuff that comes off of it and it gets down inside of this reservoir so we want to keep that cleaned out to make sure that nothing is doing harm to our pump is the main thing or that could even be caked up possibly on our aerator and maybe that's why I'm not seeing that I don't know so I'm gonna be checking that in a little bit uh, until the next time guys um, Safe travels, 
okay? And keep on planting. Anyways, love you guys. Talk to you later.